You are listening to the Shop Salon City Podcast, a series created for those in the beauty and salon industry, from new owners to veterans. Join us as we interview different salon owners and discuss their challenges, stories, and motivations. Today, our special guest, Phil, interviews Tom Lee, the CEO of Loraco Health and Beauty, LLC. This is part one of a three-part series. I hope you enjoy. All right, uh, this is Philip from Shop Salon City, and today I have Ton and Robin Redeker from Loraco, and uh, we want to hear about the Loraco story. So, I've known Tom for quite some time now, That's right. um, but what I realized is that I've never heard your story. And so, did a little bit of research, and where I kind of want to start off with this is I know Loraco started in 2005. Correct. But I want to go back to 1995 mm -hmm. when you and your whole family came with your siblings, five of them, I believe, mm -hmm. and um, $200. Start from there. That's right. Yes, we, um, our family came to U.S. in 1995, less than $200 in the pocket, and I just have a two set of clothes, mm -hmm. you know. Close. Yeah, close. Wow. Okay. close. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, okay. that's okay. all. And the guitar, okay, <laughs> because <laughs> okay, and uh, that we start our life, new life with all those, and um, of course that uh, I you know work anything that can make even few dollar per hour. We still you know work, and my dad, my brother, work at daytime, clean up at the night, and um, you know. Try and also you don't know that we work and then we save money and then we have to pay back for the relative in Vietnam when we you know we have to borrow the money from them uh, in order to uh, spend for the whole family back and forth transportation and do all kind of um, process okay. through the immigration process to get here. Okay. Yeah, it's the fee, or interview fee, or a lot of fees. Okay, and then we came here. New, new start a new life from 1995 and you know can I ask 95 sure. how old were you because you're the oldest That's out of right. five right yeah. uh, 25 years old 25 with a very poor English <laughs> <laughs> very okay. poor English okay uh, let me give you an example at that time I still very confused lean and lie you know okay. which one is lie which one is lean Exit and enter. When I go to the shopping, you know, shopping mall or even Kroger, Walmart, I just, when I hit the door, I have to stand a little bit thinking, okay, exit or exit out, enter in. So get into the right door. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but how, why Dallas or why Arlington? Great question. Uh, because my relative, my, my, yeah, my, my, my father relative, he came here first. That's why you know when we uh, um, about to 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 go here, and then the government asks, okay, do you have any relative anywhere? At least they can, you know come to the airport and pick you up, and help you to lease a space, rent a house, something like that. And then we have a relative here. That's why we you know came to Dallas. Okay, and um, so both your parents came. Yes. Okay. Uh, the, my parents and I have a five total five brother and sister, okay. four brother one sister. So I have Hui who is Kevin. Oh, Hui is a Kevin, correct. Right, mm -hmm. and then Khan. Khan, correct. Is your sister? My sister. And then Hugh is your brother. Correct. Okay, and then you have another brother. Another brother okay. is uh, yeah Hien. Uh, Hien okay. is uh, now a Danny, and Hugh is uh, Brian. Okay. And we is Kevin. Uh, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have, you do the you did the homework. <laughs> yeah, you <it> could did well. <laughs> Actually, I know you started in '95 when they arrived here, mm -hmm. but the backstory Please. between yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is very interesting. And I just uh, when I first heard it, I was just amazed. Okay. Um, so. Do you want to share a little bit of that? Can I? Yes, yeah, yes, do you please. Mind? Yeah, sure. So uh, during the Vietnam War, okay, um, Tom's father mm -hmm. uh, fought along or 
fought alongside was with the United States mm -hmm. in uh, in in the battles. Yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, was pretty high ranking, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, um, and when the United States pulled out mm -hmm. of Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, Tom's father was captured okay. and um, was put into a um, prison camp. Yeah. Education camp. <laughs> so prison camp. <laughs> right. Sorry. But it was basically yeah. a prison camp and was up in up in the mountains. Yeah. Um, the lot? Uh, da Nang. Yeah. Da Nang. In Da Nang. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for six years? Seven years. Seven years. Mm -hmm. So Tom basically became the senior father of the family mm -hmm. while his father was up in the mountains mm -hmm. uh, at the re-education camp. And when he was finally released, um, that's when the United States yeah. said, you served alongside our troops. We want to bring you and your family over to the United States. Okay. So that was how 1995 came about, mm -hmm. coming to the United States. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I read that, you know, when you visited your father, you had to, you know, whether you brought him lunch or I'm not sure what else, that they had inspect that you weren't sliding any messages. Uh, right. You had to sit behind, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure, a bar. Um, you know, for my generation, I can never relate. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can hear it. And so could you elaborate a little bit more about just your experience and to a younger generation that has never gone through war and only seen war on TV? And I, I mm -hmm. yeah, if you could share a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah of course, uh, you know, when during the Vietnam War, uh, I was young, you know, but of course, it's a, I still remember that we, you know, moving a lot, running a lot, you know, we, we hear the bomb from here and we run the other side and the bomb over there, we run back, you know, like, oh, oh it's crazy. Um, you know, I was still like four or five years old when, I, you know, but, but I still remember some. Uh, and then um, now, you know, when you think about it and the people, young generation, never involving with the uh, uh, war at all. We see it on TV. Yeah, yeah you're right, see on the TV, correct. But, uh, but of course, when you in there, uh, that's tough, very tough. And I, we have a tough, very tough. And right after the war, and then, you know, that my mom take care of four kids. And then my dad, we, we don't know where my dad, I, I, you know, we don't know where the, the, the father is because it took, took us a long time to find where my dad is mm -hmm. because they took him and, you know, far away from city in the mountain. And then um, my, um, my... Did you know he was in the mountain or you didn't know? I didn't know. Okay. okay. Yeah, just one night that um, they call, okay, whoever served the U.S. military, U.S. government, come and see us, we discuss something about, and then from that point, he gone. Okay. You know, they, yeah, and then uh, we don't know where he is, he was. That's right? when they took him, took him away? Yeah, took him away. Hmm. And then um, my mom uh, have, uh, you know, he, she pregnant my, the Brian, Hill. Yeah, Hill, okay. Brian, the fourth one. And then, um, and then of course, after that, and you know, he was born without dad. And then, you know, I was the oldest son. Mm -hmm. Tough, yeah. Um, so, and you say you were around five? Yeah, around five. Okay. Five so, so my oldest son is yeah. five. Okay. And so, you know, I gotta ask, you know, cause I can't imagine, you know, if he's five years old now, and he's hearing bombs. Is he is he scared? Does he know what's going on, or does he or is he numb? Because it's just it's every day, so you just continue to do what you do. Were you numb, or were you scared every time it went off, or did you know what was going on? 
Yeah, you know, back to that, uh, I I just 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 remember that okay, my mom and my relative, okay, and take me run, and uh, all you because you know because I think five four five years old, okay. we did not really understand much about okay, um, how to save my life or you know what the picture saw people you know die or something and just run, you know so. Um, I, you know, can imagine, you know, but now if I, if, if I a little bit older than that, I think that I still, I still, I, I remember then or then I imagine or I understand better, but at that time, it's crazy, you know, but, you know, of course, uh, I grew up in the middle of um, Vietnam called Quang Chi, yeah, Quang Chi, uh, okay. you know, yeah, next to Way City, yeah. Okay. Uh, is um, is uh, you know the the poor state of Vietnam. Okay. So you know it's also it it you know impact our life. That's why when we came to USA, we see that this is a, a huge opportunity for us to grow. That's why you know we uh, have an opportunity to change our life. When yeah. did you realize it was an opportunity? Oh yes, of course. You know. Uh, uh, when I came, you know, of course, before that, I learned from my dad because, you know, my dad, he worked with the uh, American soldier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he already shared with us that, you know, the U.S. is a great country and how, you know, he know. Yeah, so he shared us, you know, this is dream country, you know, dream country, you know, especially in Vietnam, they always talk about the history of your family. If my father have a bad history to them. My father is a bad person. Okay. A bad person. Okay. You know, you, you born in Vietnam, you don't support the country, you support the USA, you support, you know, uh, somebody to fight, um, uh, to fight communists. Okay. okay. You bad. Okay. Okay. And when my father bad, I don't, you know, I'm also the bad person. Okay. And my son, also the bad person. Mm -hmm. You already know it go, you know, like that. Okay. And not like in in USA, it's different. Your father doing bad thing doesn't mean that you also the bad person. Okay. No, that you know, is you know, but in Vietnam they that's why they uh, they reveal the history of the family. Whenever you do, they reveal the history. If your father is, you know, not doing good, okay, you relate it. Okay. You take part of responsibility of what your father do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like that now. This is just back then. Oh, still now, you know, of course, uh, you know, of course now it's better. Okay. Better than, 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 than before. Okay. Yeah. And also where you live, also important. If I live in Saigon, much better. But I live close to north side. Okay. You know, the, the people are thinking different. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So from 95, or when you're 25, mm -hmm. you know, your family's here, um, you know, how did you go from there to La Rocco? Yeah, okay, good. Um, um, when we came to, to U.S. 1995, after one year, uh, we do all, do all kind of things. I do construction, I do work at, uh, uh, you know, serve two jobs, and, you know, night and day, and then wait until I have green card after 12 months. You, after tw nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> after 12 months you live in the state, you got the green card, yeah, the green card, and now you become that uh, they call permanent residence, residence. Yeah. and uh, your 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 um, uh, tuition is you know now you know it's low. Otherwise, you are con they consider you are out mm. state or international student or something. You pay a lot, and after one year, you know work and study ESL uh -huh. English at yeah. night, you know, and weekend study English, and after one year, I return to uh, the college. Okay. And then study, and then um, five years later, in summer 2000, um, I graduate with uh, a master in electrical engineering. Okay. Mm -hmm. At UTA. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, so did you wait to go to school after you received your green card? Was that the reason why you waited? Um, yeah, because, because it would be cheaper? Uh, cheaper, okay. you know, because, and of course, you uh, first year when you, uh, you came, you got nothing. You, you know, work hard, try to get the money, you know, and buy a car. Okay. And yeah, that's why, you know, it's, it's the perfect time. Okay. Perfect time. First year, whole family member work hard, you know, get same money, buy a car, and, you know, uh, 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 buy the house or something like that, deposit to get the house. And after that, all the brother, uh, you know, back to the school. Well, mm -hmm. you had said even when in Vietnam that the education was very important to both parents, by both of your parents, so that they Correct. had to have a good education. Yes, okay. my parents, yeah, they are very smart. Okay. They both, and they always teach us, like, okay, um, Hey, son and daughter, you know, only one way you can change your life is education, education, education. Because I have a bad reputation, I have a bad history, I'm mm -hmm. the, you know, the enemy, and because he know. Okay. He know that, you know, it's only one way to change your life is education. That's why he always teach us like that. That's why, you know. Uh, when we came here and said, oh, yeah, the country is open. A uh, huge opportunity for us here. Mm -hmm. you, we can go to the college and then we transfer to the university. Oh, oh, wow. And then all of us. And um, if you don't mind, I will share you. Five years later, yeah. in 2000, I got the master in electrical engineering. Uh -huh. my, my, my brother, Kevin Wheatley, he... Uh, Six years later, he got, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, he got the master, and then 10 years, uh, he got the PhD in electrical engineering, too. And my younger, uh, my, my other brother, Brian Healy, uh, uh, after six years living in U.S., he got the master in uh, computer science. And my youngest brother, the one that uh, uh, born after my father released, from uh, the uh, education education camp, and now he he got um, uh, he's a cardiologist. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so you can see that you know all of us uh, doing well at the school. Okay. <laughs> I'm humble to say that, but <laughs> why double E? Was that more of your decision, or was that your parents' decision? As in, for education, you go for. A doctor or electrical engineer? Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, you know that um, because uh, uh, my uh, my uh, my strength is, um, you know, like I have a mathematic talent. Okay. And, uh, you know, and then when I came here and I asked uh, uh, several of my friends, and uh, I said, hey, if you're good in math, if you're good in math, you better go in with electrical engineering. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, because uh, electrical engineering requires a lot of math, and at that time, uh, technology, back to 1995, technology changing a lot, and they say that, okay, if you got a degree in electrical engineering, you can work on software engineering because you're learning C and C++ and, and the coding. But if you go into computer science, you only focus on the software. You don't know much about the hardware. That's why I said, oh, that's good. So let me study uh, in, you know, electrical engineering. Because you study in electrical engineering, you know both hardware and software. You know the how to design, you know circuit design, and you also can write the code for it. But if you work on the computer side and you don't know much about the hardware side, you know, that's why I picked the electrical engineering. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also at that time with Microsoft Windows, that's, it used to be hardware before, and then that was the shift to software? Is, or what year are you talking 95. about? 95. 95 still? Yeah, and at, I think that that time is a bit transition between uh, Windows NT to uh, uh, to Windows NT to Windows uh, what is that uh, Vista and something oh, like that. Okay, yeah, okay. Bef okay. yeah, even before 
seven or you know yeah but okay. that's a transition but uh, that time we have window window and t i think okay yeah. okay so that's why you decided to go into double e we correct okay. and uh, i took advice from my friend um, you know i who lived here before me okay. uh, and then they said oh you better study that uh, you know electrical engineering you easy to get job at that time and and uh, yeah indeed You know, electrical engineering. After graduated, they got a job right away. Okay. Yeah. Did yeah. Kevin go EE because of, that you went EE? Not sure, but we both. <laughs> yeah, we both. <laughs> we both study EE. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess right after you graduated, uh, did you go straight to Nokia or did you go uh, straight to Nokia? Straight yeah. To Nokia. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. And you were there for. About uh, seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I start Nokia uh, before I graduate MS e Okay. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, and then after graduate MS e that I I start with Nokia in the production in forward. But after I graduate master in uh, in Dupuy, I moved to R and D in Irving. So I working there, uh, continue working there. Uh, so about total seven years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So during that period, how did the idea of Larocco come to fruition? How did that come about? Mm -hmm. You know why we start La La Larocco? You know, right? Yeah, I'd like to hear it again. Good, great. Um, at that time. Nokia changed the strategy. They shut down the R and D in Irving, move back to Finland. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, one day that they call about thousand people, the thousand employee, you know, and then um, and they say, uh, you know, sorry, we have to, you know, we close this uh, R and D center, uh, move back to Finland, and then I got laid off. Uh huh. And then uh, this is what year? 2005. Oh, two, oh 2005. Okay. Yes. And then you know, of course, uh, you know, uh, after that, you know, I got a lot of offer from the same industry, uh, you know, because I work uh, as a radio frequency design engineer, RF, and at that time everything become wireless, wireless mouse, wireless keyboard, mm -hmm. everything wireless. So I easy to get a job. But however, that's the first time in my life that I involved in with layoff and something. Uh, and then I, I'm thinking I got the I got a good job. I got a good offer from several company. But I talked to Kevin. At that time, Kevin graduate. Yeah, okay. Kevin, my brother, he graduate. Uh, he he got the PhD. He uh, become. He became a research scientist for the company in forward. He teaching double E part time at UTA. I said, Kevin, you know, we should do something for us. You know, we should, we should do something for us because if I got the new job, the, I don't know. Someday that I will be the same. I, I panic, you know, I said, oh, maybe we don't know. And uh, the next two years I got laid off again. We don't know. Wait, you did get laid off? Lay off from uh, Nokia. Right, so you got laid off. The no, first time in my life, right? 2005. Right. And, and then I got the offer and I working, I start working right after layoff. Uh -huh. However, I still care. I still concerned that I don't know when I got a second layoff. Okay. I don't know. Okay. That's why I talked to Kevin. Okay. I said, Kevin, we should do something for us. For us, if, if we fail, if we fail, We still better than first time when we came to U.S. We got nothing. Now we have an experience, we have a education, we have degree. It's much better if we start to zero. We fail, shut down the business. We still have a something better than the day compared to the day we came to U.S. <laughs> And Kevin said, "Yeah, I think we should." And then we formed Luraco Technologies. Yeah. You said or you guys agreed that you should and you formed Larocco, but was there a product in mind or was there already a product? Uh, 
we um, we why we form Luraco Technologies because right after uh, I got laid off from uh, from Nokia, and I I working for the company who also uh, technology the Mustang technology with the short peers. Mustang uh, technology, they they write the research proposal, submit to the U.S. military and government, get the funding. And Kevin also working the same. Yeah. Oh, he was already working? Oh, he worked at Mustang? He wasn't... No, I, I work for Mustang, but Kevin worked for the company in forward, in different company, okay. but also provide the research for military and government. Okay. So at that time, both of us, work in the, you know, same industry. Okay. The both company um, get the funding from government and uh, uh, and then uh, research and develop for government. Okay. And I say, okay, um, you know, Kevin familiar with that and I am a little bit familiar with, I worked in the short period for Mustang Technology okay. right after Nokia. And then uh, we started Luraco with the, in my is technology, and we provide, we write research proposal, submit to the military and government and get the funding from them. That is, uh, you know, that what we, that's, you know, um, the idea to start Luraco. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, see, I never knew that. Uh -huh. I mean, I've seen military, government, mm -hmm. you know, contracts, but you know, whenever I ask other people in the industry, mm -hmm. I'm like, what is that military business? Is yeah, that is that a legit <laughs> business or is that just the marketing? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this podcast was paid for and sponsored by ShopSalonCity.com, the go-to online solution for hair, nail, spa, and barber salons that need equipment and furniture. And unbeatable customer service are just a few reasons why we are trusted by thousands of salons worldwide. Thank you for listening to the podcast and join us next month. Have a great rest of the day.